Um, so you're welcome once again. So this is a continuation of our lecture on finding the nth roots of a complex number. So here I want to look at a simple example. I want to find the three cube roots of z is equal to i. Okay? I mean, if you phrase not there, and you're asked to find the cube roots of z equals i, you know that you, you, are, you need three, three roots. Okay? So z is equal to this. Uh, how do you go about it? Now remember in the last lecture we showed that the, um, the nth roots of any complex number W is given by this, right? We want to find the um, nth root of Z. This is cosine of theta plus 2 pi k all over n, okay? Plus i sine theta plus 2 pi k 2 pi k over n, right? Okay, where k, um, well, k is from 0, 1, 2, all the way to n minus 1. Now, in this case, we want the cube roots. So, n will be equal to 3. Okay, um, okay. so you are going to take a equal 0, 1, up to 2, because of n at n minus 1. Alright? Now, we need to find theta, we need to find r. From the complex number. R here is the, argument, the uh, modulus and theta is the argument of z. So you need to find that. Okay? So we know this um, R here will be the modulus of z. That is the square root of, I mean, the real part is 0. So if you like, this is 0 squared. This is 1 squared. So basically, this is equal to 1. So we know what R is. Uh, how do we get theta? I mean, z is equal to i. If this is a complex plane, um, this is real, this is imaginary, right? So i is somewhere here. So the angle, okay, like this is i here. So the angle is basically 90 degrees, okay? That is pi on 2. So theta there will just be equal to pi over 2, okay? It's 90 degrees. So we know theta, we know r, plug that in here. So the general formula we want to use now to find the cube root will be this is equal to r is 1, n is 3, so all of this is 1, all right? And then we have cosine of theta that we just found is pi over 2 plus 2 pi k all over n, n is 3 because it's a cube root, okay, plus i sine of pi over 2 plus 2 pi k all over 3. Okay, so k here will be 0, 1, and 2. So this is this is basically the formula you want to find. Plug in k is 0, k is 1, k is 2, and you get the three cube roots of the complex number because i. Basically that is, uh, that is it. And so let's, um, let's compute them here. So I put, I put k equals 0 and I get the first uh, root, okay? So for k is 0, my first root, let's call that w0, this will be equal to um, cosine of, know that k is 0, so I'm going to have pi over 2 all over 3, so that's pi over 6, all right? So I'm going to get cosine of pi over 6, 6, Okay, plus i sine pi of 6, okay? And then when k is equal to 1, I'll have w1, that's my second root, is equal to cosine of, now k is 1, okay? So this will give me, let's say, 4 pi plus 6, that is 5 pi over 6, right? So that is 5 pi all over 6 plus, this should be the same, Minus pi pi over six. All right, and then when k is equal to two, I get the last root. W two will be equal to cosine of plug in two for k. That is four. This is the eight, so that is nine pi over, over six, right? I'm going to have nine pi over six. I sine of nine pi. Over 6, I can simplify this. This is cosine of 
3 pi over 2, right? Plus i sine of 3 pi over 2. In fact, this can be simplified further, right? If, as we always assumed, if theta lies between negative pi and pi, okay? Then I can simplify this further, right? This is more than a pi. So if I take, for instance, 3 pi over 2 minus 2 pi, that is going to give me, let's say this is 4, that is negative pi over 2, right? So I can plug in that, that here. So this gives me cos of pi over 2, cos of negative pi is the same as cos of pi, then minus i sine of pi over 2. So the second um, root, which is given by this, or this, I also be written as, as that. Okay? So that needs to be the three, um, the three roots of the complex number. Okay? So there are a few things that uh, I want us to learn from, from this. Okay? So you note that our formula for um, the complex root wk was given by cosine. Note that they all have the same modulus, right? This was 3, right? And I have cosine of theta was pi over 2 plus 2 pi k over n was 3 plus i sine of the same chain 2 pi k over 3, right? And I rewrite this. 3, 1, cosine of, okay? What by this by, um, by, um, 2, actually, let's say this, 2 pi k all over 3, i sine of, there should be i here, sine of pi over 2, 2 pi k all over 3. Okay? So this was what we used to find the, uh, the roots so you have one root which is which is given by this. You have a second root which is given by that. Okay, cosine of five pi over six plus i sine of five pi over six. And then we have the last one which is given by this, which can be written by this, and then we have we have this. Okay? Actually, you see that this can easily be simplified. Now I want us to note a few things. Okay? So note a few things. From W W zero, we can write this as look that cosine of pi over six that's cos uh, thirty that is three over two, right? This is the same as three over two. Okay, this is sine of thirty degrees, which is a half. So this is plus pi. All right. <coughs> Cosine of <coughs> cosine of pi pi over six. All right. Now that will be cosine of pi over six by the second quadrant, right? So pi pi over six will be um will be this angle where this is pi over six. All right. And now all students need coffee, right? Um, sine is positive, cosine is negative here. So of course, cosine of pi pi over six is the same as cos cosine of pi over six by its negative in the second quadrant. All right. So w one will be equal to negative root three over two. Okay. But this is positive. This is the same as that. So this is plus um, this and i. And then from here, note that w two is equal to. This is cos 90, which is 0. Sine of 90 is 1. So this is negative pi. So negative pi. So these roots that we have found, right, you can also rewrite them in a standard form as this. This, this, and this. Okay? Note, this is not part of the solution. I'm trying to explain something. Once you get this, W1, W2, W3, uh, 1, and 2, you're good. Those are the roots. Unless you are told to write them in the standard form. This is the solution. Here I'm trying to explain certain things. So note that 
we have um, we have these roots, and then note what happens if we add the um, if we add the roots. Okay, what happens if I do W zero plus W one plus W two? What do I get? If you add them up, note that this and this will cancel out. All right. Half i plus half i is i. i plus negative i is zero. So w2 plus w1 plus w um, 0, 1, and 2 is equal to zero. So if you add the roots of a complex number, all right, all the roots, you get a zero. All right, that makes sense. That is because the roots of the complex number actually, you notice that they have the same modulus. Not all, the distance from the origin is the same. The difference is the argument. Okay, defined by k. Okay, so as k is changing, the angle is changing, the argument is changing. But the distance from the origin is the same, which means that the roots of the complex number actually lie on a circle. Okay, they lie, they lie on a circle. All right, they have the same, you know, they have the same modulus which is given by this m root of r, same. The difference is that we are moving at different uh, angles, okay? So in the case of the cube roots, all right, the first one had an angle which is given by that. The second one has an angle of this, okay? So let's call this the z uh, naught. We have z1, uh, I use w, I think. So if you want w1, 0, W1, and then W2. So they lie in a circle like this, and they are equally spaced. All right? And then the angle between two, any two of them, the difference in the argument, all right, you can find out from, from there, is basically 2 pi over n. So 2 pi over n is the difference in argument between any two roots. Okay? So number one, the, the roots of a complex number lie in a circle. Because they have the same modulus, the difference in the angle. The angle between any two of them is fixed, is constant, and is given by this. Alright? So we'll see this more generally later on. But this is simply enough that uh, we can use to illustrate. The third thing is that when you add the roots, you go to zero for complex numbers. Alright? Okay. So in the next lecture, what I'm going to do is uh, I'll solve another example of how to find. The, uh, the nth roots, I think the fifth roots of the complex number. Again, we are going to apply this formula to find the roots. Okay? So, you see another example soon.